So it, this yeah. thing over here yeah. is pandegi, which is silk warm pupa. Well, that, was, any... I had a ju that was juicy. Like I had one that just went. <laughs> For this first episode, we're going to be talking to Jessica Lee. She is a South Korean YouTuber who has a unique story to tell, from growing up both in Korea and the Philippines to trying out a career in K-pop. She was a pre-debut member of the girl group Hyteen and former idol school contestant before deciding to move back to the Philippines for good. We will be eating in three different Korean restaurants around Metro Manila today while getting to know each other, because conversations are always better when our mouths are full. So we are in a chicken and beer spot, yes. which is really emblematic of Korean food, Korean shows, mm -hmm. um, and it's one of those kind of gateway foods that everyone loves. Yeah, chicken. So I wanted to start you off with a gateway question mm -hmm. in terms of how did you find yourself in the Philippines? So I feel like you have a very unique story. Well, I first came to the Philippines uh, in 2009 to study English, so it was not my choice. It was my parents' choice, right? And we first went to Bacolod, mm -hmm. you know where that is? Yeah, in Negros. In Negros. I did not know Tagalog by then, obviously, but I knew how to speak in Ilongo because I was really? young and okay. everyone spoke in Ilongo. I grew up with the locals there. So in the beginning, it was my parents' decision. Like mm -hmm. they just wanted us to move here to study English. Okay. But we did not go to Manila because my dad went to, wanted to grant us with like the most local experience. Okay. Yeah, Fair like enough. not in the city. Yeah. So. But then um, I had a choice though to whether I wanted to stay in the Philippines or like leave somewhere else but I decided to stay because I love my school. So we were just going to like stay for three months in the beginning mm -hmm. but my dad and we ended up loving Bacolod so really? much. Oh. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jesus, that's a lot. Wow. Which part of Korea are you from originally? Which it's, um, in Ilsan. Have you heard? Ilsan is a city very near Seoul. So it's like a big city. It's a big, suburb pretty big also, city. Yeah, suburb. Right? Yeah. And so, how did that transition? Because Bacolod, I mean, is yeah, it's not necessarily a big city. I mean, it's, it's considered a, it's one a of province. the top cities, but it's still fairly yeah, small. Yeah, right? it is. Yeah. Like also because we didn't want to like be with a lot of Koreans because we're in the Philippines, right? So we don't want to be one of those Koreans who would only hang out with Koreans. True. So like that's why we wanted to have the local experience. So Macaulay and we loved food. You know, Inna Sal is very famous there. Yeah, yeah of course. Like, yeah. I best. loved yeah, I loved the Inna Sal there and and the teachers. My English teachers, I fell yeah. in love with most of them. Ended up like visiting their houses even on the weekends and like staying with them. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2014, uh, 15, I started like my K-pop training career in Korea. So I dropped out of school. Well, not drop out, but I did not go to school. Okay. Stayed in Korea for like so you two years. Took a pause. Basically. Yeah, yeah, and then I came back, and then after that, I just went back and forth until I quit completely my journey of K-pop. Yeah. So now it was completely my choice to come back here. I mean, that's a massive adjustment. Yeah, very. And I started YouTube full time. I grew my channel like um, mostly in Korea. That's the only nice. time I started full time. Yeah. I come from so the the guys who started YouTube with me, we started 12 years ago. And I, I remember it took me seven years to get to 100,000 subscribers because it was just, it yeah, wasn't it was as not popular, mainstream, right? Yeah. It, wasn't, it wasn't mainstream. Not a lot of people had kind of this free access to internet where you could consume lots of videos and stuff like that. So it took much longer. Because I've seen a lot of your content, it's a lot to do with the Philippines. Yeah. And I think rightfully so. I yeah. Think, so. In fact, I'm like really Pinoy in a way. Yeah, yeah, I'm more Pinoy than some of my Pinoy friends. I get what you mean. Yeah. You get, I mean, you get to experience a very local lifestyle yeah. in, in Bacolod, yeah. like, right? I mean, That's why like a huge part of my identity was, it find, finds its space here in the Philippines pretty much. Yeah. Nice. Okay, let's let's start here. Is there is there a yeah. particular way? So we have, you're gonna say it because okay, yeah. I'm gonna slaughter okay. the names and all of Korea is gonna hate me. So <laughs> what do we have in front of us? Okay, I know so, this is tteokbokki. Yeah, tteokbokki. Okay, okay, so this place is like uh, they got the trendy uh, stuff in Korea right now. 
So these are like, like the tteokbokki and chicken is a very famous uh, combo, delivery food combo. Together? Yeah, really? together. Oh, I didn't but know usually that. Okay. we get like either like not yangnyeo, not the one with sauce, usually with the powder. This has been a trend, like potato corner, but with on French chicken. Yeah, much yes. better. Yeah. So this is uh, yangnyeo, cheese, kampung chicken, right? It's like Chinese style, okay. kind of, the sauce. And this is what's been trending a lot in Korea among the younger people. Mm -hmm. And this is rose tteokbokki or rose tteokbokki. Okay. You know the normal tteokbokki, the red ones? Yes. They just added cream in there and bacon. Um, and this is usually something that's consumed with a lot of beer. Right? Yeah. That's why it's usually Chimek, called chicken yeah. and beer. Yeah, chicken and beer, yeah. I'm going to start with this because it's super strange to me. And tteokbokki is usually kind of like spicy, right? Yeah, spicy. That's good. Really? I mean, the term in Tagalog where you say it's baboy food. So when you say it's baboy, it's like yeah, yeah. super fatty, right? Like there are a lot of pulutan. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I don't know why Koreans love drinking so much. Drinking culture is crazy. I think it's an Asian thing. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try this. So this is a cheese Shizu, powder. Yeah, this is also very trendy. Actually, loja tteokbokki and cheese together, it's a like young people combo. And you say cheese right? Cheese yeah. Cheese Shizu, yeah. How's this? Really good. Really? Yeah. Really? I, mean, I taste the MSG, which is lovely. usually like only young people like it. It's like thank you. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna try the jam. Kampung. 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 Notice how I just punctured. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to make sure that I mm -hmm. stick to it. That's good too. Super sweet. Super sweet. Yeah. Did you ever do any like mukbangs in your town and stuff? Yeah, a lot of Filipino food, I guess. Really? I love Filipino food so much. Korean food and Filipino food are quite similar, I would say. Like, every Filipino food goes well with kimchi, first of all. True. Do you like spicy? You, you can eat spicy food, right? It is spicy. This is intense. This is spicy? Yeah, it's really spicy. Are you, do you eat spicy food? Yeah, okay. yeah. I'm, and I'm like, my spicy tolerance is normal in Korea. Okay. Ooh. That's what you use radish for. Yeah. Okay. And also because it's greasy, right? Mm. When did you decide that you wanted to go through K-pop training? So when I was 13, that was me in grade 6. Eight, no, 12, sorry, yeah, 12. Yeah. And I watched like, do you know 21? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I got into Sandara part in the beginning, yeah. Because she, she was famous here. Correct. Because like, she's like the icon of like Korean in the Philippines, right? And you were the one Korean at school. Yeah, and like, yeah. oh, do you know Sandara? For sure. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. Okay. And so I saw their videos and I was like so inspired. But in the beginning, I thought like, I would not be able to make it because you know like what you see on the outside is like they're so pretty you know like they're fit and they're thin my image of k-pop idols are they're like so white it's be perfect yeah like perfect like clean legs like mm -hmm. no scar but i was a bacolod provincial kid right so i would climb the palm trees and stuff and i was really really dark i was much darker than i am now like i just thought like i wouldn't be able to get in because like i have a lot of scars in my legs you know and I'm not like pretty like that, but uh, but then I went, I got into an academy in Korea um, to learn acting actually in the beginning, but during my summer break, because uh, we won't go to Korea every summer, mm -hmm. and then one of the, the owner of the academy suggested me, introduced me to a producer who was working at a K-pop company, and he was like, you know what, in order to be an actress, you have to go through the K-pop route first, yeah. Because I wanted uh, to be so an actress in the like beginning. A launching pad. Mm -hmm. That's can we find videos online? Yeah, you can. Oh, you can. Okay, we'll we'll use those. So I went through the whole training process for three years in total. Like, what were the things that completely shocked you? Well, okay. Without getting in trouble, obviously. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um. Uh, in the beginning, it was really physically draining because, like, we were on diet. There's this. We can't imagine this. Ever like we there's like this cup noodles they sell in convenience store which is like 120 calories like that was what was allowed for us like per day yeah um, I joined this show called the Idol School from Mnet which is a pretty mainstream like uh, broadcasting company mm -hmm. so it's like a show where uh, there are 40 girls coming out as like idol students and they pick like 11 of them to debut as a K-pop idol so that was the concept but everything went wrong with the show I guess now the show actually got into a pretty big trouble for okay. kind of like uh, banning the laws because you know like the children are, like minors are not allowed to like work past 10 of course yeah, yeah but they broke the rules and turns out that the votes were manipulated as well no, so it's just super controlling. Yeah, super controlling, and there were people who were younger than me. I was like the mid-age 
Yeah, it was just too inhumane, I guess, the environment. Yeah. Because of the fact that we had to weigh ourselves every day in the first place. and Every day? Yeah. Even I don't do that. Okay, wow. That's and we intense. still went to the gym just to use the treadmill. So we, we don't even do like so just weights. Just drop weight, basically. Yeah, like really no carbs like until you're really, really, really thin. But it was really the kind of the system behind it that made it too harsh where I felt like I was a product, yeah. basically. Yeah, I was a product, yeah, yeah, yeah. like not really. That's you know. what I was about to say. You're like a piece of wood. Yeah. And then they just... Yeah, Chip carve it, you, yeah. Carve it, make you perfect, and then select you, yeah. and then launch you. Yeah. Right? Exactly, exactly. And even once you're launched, you, there's no guarantee. Now it's getting more and more polarized, actually. Like, uh, wow. Thank you. Oh. Okay, so wait. So this is a surprise. That sounds like <laughs> have you ever oil seen this? and chili. Have you ever seen this? I don't know, but my eyes are hurting. So whatever You've never seen? No, I've never seen that. It's called Pondegi Tang. So Pondegi this tang. thing over here yeah. is Pondegi which is silkworm pupa, basically, okay. like, you know, before it borns into... <laughs> yeah, so, and usually in the street, they give it in a little, like, uh, paper cup. Okay. Yeah, but this one is the pulutan style, so it comes in a pot. And do you, like, line it up, like, Yeah, barbecue? you can do that, yeah. So, there, it's it's high in protein. Mm, thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's making me feel better about it. Wow, you're so brave. Wow. It's not mm. bad. I'm trying to figure out how to explain that to everyone. Kind of like a boiled peanut. Like where it pops a little bit, and you can yeah. kind of feel See, the... but when you use words like pops, <laughs> yeah. it's just not a good word to use. <laughs> yeah, but, but it's not bad, player-wise. So if I would pick... Well, or that if was, any... I had a ju that was juicy. Like, I had one that just went... <laughs> hot, released, hot, hot. It released yeah. everything. Since this was your recommendation, we're now going to move on to a restaurant that yeah. I actually go to and I quite like. It. Okay, let's go. My old office actually used to be just on the other street, yeah. right? So this is kind of yeah. like the red light district yes. meets yeah, K-Town. But also at K-Town, yeah. Correct. So a lot of authentic Korean foods here. I've been here a lot, uh, hanging out with my Korean friends. Mm -hmm. So like this is one of the most authentic places you can go if you want authentic Korean food. Correct. The place we're going to now, which is called Top Dish, yep. really old school vibe. Go through the kitchen yeah. and you get some very yeah. provincial style mm -hmm. comforting Dishes. Even the name is very, very Korean. Like the weird. Kujip, yeah. <laughs> Does that actually mean top dish? No, no, no. What does it mean? Um, that house during that time. What? This is probably my favorite part of eating in any Korean restaurant is right. the banjan. Mm -hmm. yeah. I actually don't know how to call all these things. I know this is kimchi, mm -hmm. and I know this is spinach, but what are the actual Korean names? Yeah, like tangkong, jorim, jeon, and I think muche, and uh, yeah, beans, beans sprouts, yeah. Specials. So this is yeonpo tang. It's, I guess it's more like pulutan as well. So tito by food, okay. yeah. With, <laughs> like I never tried it. All right, yeah. and it's octopus. Yeah, like uh, seafood, and I don't know what made it red. I mean, I like it. It's stew, there's some radish mm -hmm. in there, there's some... Yeah, it looks very spinach. healthy. It's very healthy. Mm -hmm. okay. I tasted the broth. This is actually going to surprise you. Is it like it's medicine? Not, no, 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 no. It's actually going to surprise you. You're actually going to like it. It has some spice. I like it. It's good, though. It's very good. I, I thought it was going to be a very... Um, what's it called? Very tame flavor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I thought it was gonna be very simple, mm -hmm. but it's actually very intense. Very rich in flavor. Very rich. Yeah. Mm, I love it. So the broth is yeah. so good. It's and it's also not greasy. So we just came from very unhealthy. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Korean food, mm -hmm. and this is actually more like for older. Super yeah. healthy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like she keeps saying older. <laughs> I mean, okay, okay, okay. I mean, like I wouldn't go hang out with my friends like and have this. Kind of, yeah. It's a weird thing to eat. More like for family, I guess. In the last restaurant we were talking about how you kind of transitioned to YouTube and stuff. Mm -hmm. How did you go from, okay, this is just a fun thing of sharing videos online to I want to do this mm -hmm. for work? As for a work, yeah. I started YouTube in 2017 and I was still a student, high school student. In the beginning, I used to make K-pop videos. A lot of, uh, I shared a lot of my experiences in the K-pop industry in my videos. So I garnered, I got to garner a lot of like international audience from English speaking countries. But I realized at one point that 
you know, I'm, my current life was in the Philippines and I wasn't in the K-pop industry anymore. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to make my content more relevant to my, life, my current life, which was my life as a high school student in the Philippines. So that's how I started like, making okay. videos about the Philippines. So, but it was more like very casual, like vlogs. I would upload like twice a month, you mm -hmm. know. But it became a real like, thing when after the pandemic, my plans all got, because I graduated in the year when COVID happened. A lot of people who were still in school kind of didn't have school, right? They're all virtual and mm -hmm. stuff, right? Yeah, so like I ended up not going, I was planning to go to school actually, college, but okay. like I couldn't go to the place where I wanted to go, right? So it was canceled and I ended up staying in Korea. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why not like bring back my YouTube channel? Because that was the time when I kind of like stopped YouTube already for like a few months because I was okay. busy preparing for school. Yeah, I brought life back to my channel by like uploading more. And uh, I was like, I got really passionate about content creation since then actually. That's the time I started watching a lot of uh, Korean YouTubers, Filipino YouTubers, feature. Yep. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and then I was like, I started thinking about, I guess the kind of value of my content in, at some point where I didn't want it to be too casual where it's just vlogs. I wanted it to have like some more substance and like I, I wanted to put like a lot of effort in it in a way that's it's really different from the existing like foreign vlogger mm -hmm. format in yep. the you know the typical yeah yeah. yeah. So I didn't want to go that path so I tried to you know relate a lot to like my relation to the Philippines and also uh, the fact that I'm coming from Korea and also a lot of people thankfully <laughs> love Korea so much. They're interested in the culture. Correct. So I thought like, yeah, it should be the bridge kind of, you know, I should take the role of the bridge between Korea and the Philippines. Correct, yeah. yeah so that's what lived, happened. You've lived that experience, right? Yeah, both, I guess, yeah. Thank you very much. So this looked really interesting on the menu. And chicken feet, that was your order normally. Okay, yeah. So these two are my favorite. Really? <laughs> as well. Okay. So this is chicken feet, Adidas. So we have that in the Philippines yep. as street food, but we eat it spicy like this. Oh, we need to eat it with hands, actually. With your hands? So this is just grilled... Pork this is just skin. grilled pork skin. Good. Spicy? Not so much. But I like the... When you think of pork skin in the Philippines, you think of lechon, extra crispy. Mm -hmm. or you think the of, lechon skin? Correct. Yeah. Or you think of chicharron. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Chicharron, uh, chicharron. Which is super crunchy. So it's a nice, different texture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like how they usually eat it, like there's a way. So there are like four fingers, right? Yeah. <laughs> So you have to like eat the each finger first. And then you um, chew with a mm. gelatin. But I'm gonna keep going back to this. This is something like if Filipinos haven't tried this, they're gonna love this. And I'm pretty sure this is some sort of vinegar. Soy sauce, right? It's okay. yeah. It's like a lot a of Filipinos would love. Garlic yeah. vinegar dip. This is very Filipino in style. Yes. When did your friends from high school start saying, oh shit, you're starting to become popular? Mm. Well there was one video that I guess like made me want to keep making videos and like really was a big like jump you know like one of the most viewed uh, videos in my channel was called uh, the cancel korea movement okay ah yeah no it's this huge war yeah online. Yeah, okay. yeah well that was a big thing and like actually at that time i woke up with a bunch of comments <laughs> hashtag cancel korea hashtag cancel korea okay. and of course pinoy baiting was always the kind of comment i was getting obviously because me being a foreigner and yeah. so i was like so shocked <laughs> what got to know about the situation which is very like in fact, it's very petty. It's very, 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 very petty. And but then, most things online. online yeah, right? it was. Yeah. But then I just like still felt like um, I had the responsibility to like kind of talk about it. You know, like why do Koreans get mad with, let's say, why are they so sensitive with the uh, rising sun flag, something like that? Yeah. So as a Korean, you know, I could better explain. So I did that, and that video went trending number one for like a whole week. Wow. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't necessarily know how other people live. Yeah. And I feel like if a human has a better understanding of someone else's journey, mm -hmm. then that makes us all better. Yeah. And so that's why that type of content where you go behind the scenes and you realize, shit, this thing I thought was, or I never really saw before, yeah. all of a sudden it's, I realized how hard this is to do or mm -hmm. how complicated this person's life mm -hmm. is. Exactly. And so those kinds of videos, how have, been made and how have they been received? So many people, thankfully, Many people loved it, and also actually the inspiration I got for that channel, I, for that series was there's a whole channel in Korea called the Workman, mm -hmm. so I also wanted to like bring that. You're very new to this, yeah, right? So you just started, but I think you're doing it definitely in the right way, right? Thank because you. Because people see that, see the effort that's made, see the intent, yeah, right? yeah, the yeah, the passion that's behind mm -hmm. there. 
Um, so we're gonna wrap up this food mm -hmm. and we're gonna talk more about that. We're now gonna move to a newer part of town in Manila where there's also a lot of Korean restaurants and I haven't really spent much time there. So I'm really, really excited for that. Yeah, Malate, let's go. But then let's finish. I think I'm gonna finish a couple more yeah, of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This to me looks very foreign. Really? I, yeah, yeah. Have you tried this? Everything in front of me, I have not tried. No. And and raw crab is something that I don't know. It just it seems weird. Like the little beetle things you maybe eat, yeah. those are okay. But raw crab seems a little. Uh, we've leveled up here. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. I, For, I thought of the other way actually. <laughs> this is called kanjang kejang. Kanjang kejang. Yeah, kanjang kejang. Uh, soy sauce marinated crab. They also have a yangnyeom gejang with red sauce. Okay. But yeah, this this one is a classic. And it's eaten how? So okay. Because there's a lot of things going on here. <laughs> yeah. Like this. this is my favorite. So you know. So I think this also seen a lot in K dramas where like the grandmother, like the grandparents, they cook for you know like kimchi and they give it to their grand uh, children. So this is one of them. Okay. Yeah, one of like grandma dishes, dishes. that they cook. So this is considered comfort food. Comfort right? food. Wow. Okay. So first of all, well I guess you have to take this one. Mm. She went. You went right for the... Yeah. That was the one I was looking at. I was like, oh, I hope yeah. she doesn't pick that one up for me. Because so, that is meaty. I don't know if anyone yeah. can see this. It's yeah, meaty. a lot of flesh. So actually how you eat it, well, you can just like ooze it out. Mm. The, yeah, you can like that. And then you can put it on top of your rice and eat it with rice. Or okay. you can just go straight with your mouth. Okay, I'm going to... Yeah. You're not messing with me or anything. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It, Texture-wise, it reminds me of uni. Um, sea urchin, but very strong aftertaste and so full. Mm. There's so much meat in that. Very authentic. Really? So wow. This is really well done. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Well, I'm not, so. it's not, I don't have the same reaction as you, but no, it is, it okay, is so, actually. So now the highlight is um, the sauce. This one. So they say that uh, ganjang gejang is called as papdoduk in Korean, which means literal translation rice stealer. Okay. A rice thief, actually. Rice so, thief. Because it calls for rice. But okay. it's pretty salty, ah, right? Okay. Add in the rice. Okay. It's like really authentic Korean style. And I'm then, actually super happy because I, I did not expect we were going to eat this. And then you just like, like bibimbap, you mix it along with the, with like the, the intestines and all that. No, this is easier to eat than the, the squishy part. Mmm. Wow. This is actually my favorite chokpa place, chokpa. So they're open 24 hours. This is, by the way, considered kind of like the new Manila town. So chokpa is what exactly? Well, it's a uh, port fee area, so exactly the same as um, crispy pata, okay. but not fried, but like boiled. Boiled. Very. It goes well with. Yeah. We so couldn't. I was, I was saying we couldn't have a a conversation about Korea and eat Korean food mm -hmm. without soju and. There you go, Philippines and Korea. Yes. <laughs> wow, thank you. Ah, this is, don't tell me. We can eat this with chokpa. It looks like bibing guksu, but it's not. Yeah, it's, it is, I think. Is it? Yeah. Okay. The tornado. Yeah. I don't know how to make it. I, would, I used to be good at it. There. Yeah. For some reason, they do that. And sometimes some dip gesture. No, yeah. That. Correct. Thank You're you. a Tito, so I'm like. <laughs> I'm your Tito. Thank yeah. you very much. Appreciate it. Well, thank you. So you, you gotta go one shot, you know yeah. that, right? How do you say cheers again? Like, oh, uh, done. Uh, mm. So my favorite dish, Korean dish before, was bosang. Oh! I love that. Yeah, this is boy pork, pork belly, yeah. It's very simple, mm -hmm. but so that's why I think I'm gonna like this. Lettuce <laughs> and then one piece. So a lot of collagen here too, yes. you know? Yes, tons. It's the pork skin, and then you can add some of this one. It's like, yeah, yeah right. kimchi, yeah. You can add gar raw garlic if you want. The raw garlic. I find that a little intense. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you want, you can add like I think you can go for the classic one first. Okay. I don't. You didn't want to go, no. Mm. You should do it in one go. So tell me about your childhood. Okay. <laughs> mm. It's good. Mm. You can taste that the mm -hmm. pork was braised with cinnamon, sugar, a bunch of aromatics. Yeah. And it really permeates yeah. the skin and the flavor mm -hmm, of the, mm -hmm. the pork. Really nice. Anyways, sorry. Meet you on this Yeah. 
Mm. <coughs> and actually, I wanted to talk to you about a, a very funny, funny thing. I want to know your thoughts on this. Okay. Okay, so this dish is gen leaf. Have you tried it? No. I know, I know it's shiso leaf, right? Per perla uh, leaves, perla yeah. leaf, yeah. And so this like marinated per perla leaves and how you eat it with, um, so you have to separate it one by one like this, yeah. like that, right? You, your one leaf each. chopstick skills are so, are putting me to here, shame. Here, 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 I'm this trying. one, this one, this one. I'm trying my best. Is this one whole leaf? Okay, cool. Okay. Yes. So what I just did right now, mm -hmm. I helped you get it, right? Yeah. By holding one stack so you can take get out. Get the other one. Yeah, so okay. this has been a, <laughs> Very interesting debate in Korea now. Really? It's called the parallel leaves debate where... Mm -hmm. So the situation is, right? You're eating like this, just like what we were doing. So you're with your girlfriend and I'm your friend. Mm -hmm. when, you're when I was having a hard time getting this, okay. if you help me That's pick cheating. up, is it acceptable or no? It's totally acceptable. What are people crazy over there or what? Yeah, I knew you would say yeah. that. But if you had a, a, another girl here that was my girlfriend and mm -hmm. I helped you get the parallel yeah. leaves, she'd be jealous? Yeah. What? That's crazy. How's how's this a big thing? Like, are people getting? Oh, so you don't understand the debate? I mean, I I don't get it. I, I think it's okay. So first of all, it's a very intimate like move. Is it really? Because like you know, you have your food in here, right? <laughs> Everyone's talking about it. Even all the famous K-pop idols, all really? the famous K. Yeah. So it's like, it's like either meme, meme culture mm -hmm. almost. Either it's acceptable or no. Okay. Do you really see yourself uh, setting base here in the Philippines and settling down here, or do you? Um, like what are your what are your plans moving forward? Yeah, yeah. When I was 21, I was an idiot. <laughs> I wasn't doing anything. The thing is, like, I also feel like my career is just getting started now because mm -hmm. I just came here, and so yeah, definitely I'm seeing myself here for a while, maybe in the near future. I'm really digging this. Whoa. I think if, if you're watching the camera, I keep getting it from here. Yeah. It's really comforting, Chokbar. and I love. I'm a huge fan of do-it-yourself, mm, and like so I love kind of like oh, I want it sweeter, saltier, mm -hmm, spicier. Mm -hmm. And so this for me is, is, is a winner. And yeah, thank okay. you. Thank you so much for having me as well. For sure. Guys, it's a dream come true that I met Erwin <laughs> because you're my, your channel is my idol. My, thank you. Thank yeah. you, Dad. I hope you enjoyed that first episode of Mouthful. For the longest time, we've been trying to figure out a talk format that represents feature well. And if you liked it, please make sure to like the video and comment below. More importantly, let us know who you want us to interview next.